Hello everyone, Relgan here again. It has been a while, but I'm pleased to be back. I'm pleased to be once again filled with passion and to teach you guys yet another variation of the Free Roach style. Free Roach opener is what initially carried me from Master League to Grandmaster League. Once I started playing this build is really when I made the leap. Nowadays I'm not really relying on it that much anymore, but I really used it as a teaching tool to teach myself how to play the game. In the meantime, I went over many iterations of the build. We went free Roach into Muta, then we started going into Corruptors instead, then free Roach all in, then free Roach Hydra. Now we arrived at free Roach Double Nidus. Yes, you heard right. Let's quickly go over the opener. I went for a 16 pool. Hatch, gas, roach foreign. Then I drawn up the gas. I built four links. Doesn't matter if you build two, four or zero. You should always build two links. Sadly, I walk into the reaper. And it shuts me down. I'm trying to split the links into every direction I possibly can. So you cannot kill them all. So I can still somehow get damage done on the opponent's side of the map. For those of you who are new to this build... The goal is to get out the queen so we don't have to deal with the reaper. The queen just naturally stops the reaper. Push across the map. Do as much damage as we possibly can with links trying to kill the SCV or the marines. In this game the marine dies and then I'm going to get the SCV as well I believe. At home, build additional queens, build thrones, build three roaches. Doesn't really matter if you build two, one or three but usually three roaches is the, go is the golden number because Three roaches are enough to one-shot an SCV and a marine. Four roaches would be enough to one-shot a reaper. Two roaches are enough to two-shot a reaper. Those are the things that I look at. Generally, if my opponent opens with a reactor marine opener, it's better to build more roaches. At least that's what I believe, but I mean... Oh, a lot of opponents just kind of die against the free roach pressure. Let's have a quick look. I started my lair with my, as soon as I reached 100 gas after the roaches. Then I'm constantly joining my natural. Around 3.30 I take two additional gases. I went for three queens total. I built two in the main, one in the natural. The first from the main I rallied to the natural. Then started injecting the first queen detached at the natural. I used to spread creep. Creep spread very important. Mucho, mucho likes. I'm not sure. Mucho gusto, 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 I have no idea. I don't speak Spanish. But the ling is, the point of the ling here is to deny him from mining the natural. The roaches put pressure on him and show me what he's going for. At home, there, gas, and an additional gas soon, I think. I don't know. Sometimes I take it at 345, sometimes at 40. You just don't want to have too many drones and the minerals. It's just important that you take the gas and build the drones. Try to not get too, uh, too supply stuck. The road just go home because I saw the tech lab on the factory and I don't really want to die against the cyclone. Spoilers, cyclones are pretty good units. Opponent is scouting a bit. The deviation. The standard free roach into muta build would now build the spire. Instead, I'm getting Roach Speed and two additional Queens delaying the Spire. I'm also getting Overlord Speed, because I kind of have to get these Overlords into position so I can actually properly Nidus him. I'm kind of lucky that the Viking doesn't find the Overlord ever, I think. Then, I build two Nidus Worms as soon as I have, the, as soon as I have enough gas. Why two Nidus Worms? It's it's a bit complicated. People come to my chat and they're like, Relgan just built four Nidus worms. Trust me, they cannot stop the four the quadruple Nidus penetration. I'm like, yeah, that's not really the point. <laughs> like, the reason why I built two Nidus worms is because it allows me to do Nidus is main and natural at the same time very easily, and I can also just double Nidus is main. What I'm doing right here, which eventually, which is eventually what pretty much wins me the game, is he sees the Overlord, he shoots at the Overlord, the Overlord goes in to scout, immediately turns around. That was Diva, he uses the Diva voice pack. I know it's a disease. 
It's not my fault. I use stasis and dertosis. At home, I'm of course loading up my Nidus uh, networks. He doesn't see the <laughs> Nidus worm going down because the well, his Viking was out of vision. Then I pop out all my units in his main, and I mean he has a quite a nice marine count here. Um, he's going across the map with Hellions and Cyclones, doing a lot of damage to my natural. That's okay. Then we're going for another Nidus in the natural in a bit here, just putting pressure on him. This is actually... Now, wait, let's have a quick look at what I'm doing here, because this is very gets interesting, right? It's very important to look at what the ni new Nidus Worm of offers us. I plop down a Creep Tumor immediately, then I notice... Let's look at my vision for a sec. That's not my vision, this is my vision. I see that he's attacking me. My reaction... Pull the units, send them into the Nidus, rally the Nidus down there, rally the Queens into the main base. Sorry, gonna slow down a bit here. Then I rally the Queens to kill the Liberator, I rally the Roaches to kill the uh, Cyclones and Hellions. Then the Roaches over here are still fighting, then a Nidus is natural, he still has a Nidus worm in the main base, and I'm trying to pull his army into his main. Now, what the Nidus Worm is, is it's basically a teleportation device. I can instantly teleport my entire army from my main base to my opponent's main base. And now, now it's going to get interesting, right? Because you would look at this army and be like, well, Railgun, yeah, that, but that's still a pretty strong army to kill, right? You're down to 25 workers. Are you really going to win this game? Yes. So what do we do? Fight, 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 fight. Then I notice the Nidus Worm in the natural is probably gonna finish. Pull the units quickly. Try to fight, 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 fight. Make him try to make him fire at his own army. Beat him back, beat him back, beat him back. Then reinforcements pop out in his natural. Now he's an army in the main base and in the natural. I notice that he's pulling his army to his natural. So I load up all my units, spit them all out in the natural. And now he, <laughs> I can basically defend my base, attack him in his main and in the natural at the same time with the same army. I know I, I might have a couple Protoss viewers in uh, that are like, well, rail can, but I can do that as well. I just have to use my adapt shade and then recall them. That's not what I'm. That's not what we're talking about here, right? The problem is. Or the interesting point is that I can do that as a Zerg. Like usually you would, you need like, you need the OP Protoss units to have your units in three bases at once, like the Adept or the Oracle that basically teleports between bases anyways, the War Prism that can pick up an Immortal over here and drop them into the natural and then get recalled and then defend his natural. And then warp in like 8 salads at the third base. But as Zerg, we usually can't do that, right? We have to wait. The Nidus Worm allows us to teleport our unit. I'm going to show you guys a lot, a lot more Nidus Worm action over the next couple of days. You better be ready.